the weather is getting reliably colder and colder. Last night we had some good snow. Today we're getting a little bit of a thaw up in the 40s or so, but it'll get definitely freezing again very soon. And so we're focusing now on how do we preserve uh, crops that we've been growing in our high tunnels and our greenhouses. And what I want to talk about in this video is this year's, this fall's experiment in heating with compost. So hopefully that's compelling and stick around. The crops in the garden are still growing. Well, not growing, but they're holding on. But we know all it takes is one or two good cold snowless nights down in the, t the teens or low 20s Fahrenheit and a lot of these will disappear. I'm going to do a video soon about a perennial-ish kale. Um, there's some other crops that we can be nibbling throughout the winter without any protection, but in our Zone 5B New York State uh, context, especially on our north slope here, we really need spaces like this. I talked recently about this high tunnel and the compost heating uh, experiment. Uh, it's uh, just in the upper 30s, low 40s outside. It's piping hot in here. It's probably 65 or 70. Very big difference. And the compost heating on the other side is really helpful to that end. I'll link here if you want to see more notes on that. And so now I want to focus some energy on the greenhouse that I built that is attached to our home. Rinky dink in some ways, very low cost overall, a couple hundred dollars. And it's a nice space. I really enjoy it. Although, to be perfectly honest, this season, this fall, it kind of fell on the wayside. We didn't get it planted out as nicely as we'd like. So hopefully we get a little bit of a thaw here or there and we can move some greens more into that space to populate it. But what I'm working on now is a revisit to the compost heating system for this. When I built this structure, I documented how here on the southwest corner, uh, I integrated very simply, you can see there's a a half inch hardware cloth mesh. It's a metal mesh that allows really amazingly good ventilation during the summer months. So if this structure was off to the side, I'm going to get into detail on that in a moment, but that allows very good passive airflow from there all the way through to the door, which is replaced with mesh. So there's tons of good ventilation, even on a 90 degree day, uh, lots of good air moves through. And as we get to the cold time of year, it serves as an opportunity to set up a thermally productive compost system on the outside that can release some of that heat into the greenhouse. Anyone that watches this channel knows that I'm a big fan of leaf bags, as are many of you. And so what I was trying to do this season is think through how can I distill out the complexity of building a very, very hot compost system that's conservative in space, that's well insulated and functional. And so what I came up with is I went out for a quick run for uh, one truckload of leaf bags and came up with a one truck based leaf bag compost heating system. And you can see just like the, the leaf bags in our chicken yard, uh, I leaned into the idea of using bags themselves as both the structural members to hold in the compost as well as an insulative element. So bags that had dry leaves were stacked first and then another course on top. And into this space, I basically dumped leaves from those bags. I did not shred them or anything like that, but I layered in a bit of unfinished compost throughout, a little bit of chicken bedding, a little bit of urine, and then capped it with about a foot of leaves after winding 100 feet of PEX tube through it. And here we are, oh, five days later. And it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, this compost temperature probe is reading 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's in about 18 inches, uh, which is where I need it to be, because that is where the PEX circuit is that we can hold the option of pulling water that is warmed by this into the greenhouse. And we'll talk about that in detail. What's interesting to me is I'm seeing 140 Fahrenheit down about 18 inches, and I'm seeing snow on top. And that to me is a very positive sign because it means there's a huge amount of heat being generated, but not a tremendous amount being lost to the atmosphere. Pardon the mess on the inside here, but it is what it is. So obviously this is the inside of that same space. You can see the hardware cloth mesh there. So it can freely allow heat to uh, come out of that space, but it's not actively being drawn off. If I take that same temperature probe, that I used outside. Bear with me, I'm moving awfully slow. I've got a blown out back these days. But 
if I pop in here, let me get the focus automatic. Okay, so I just plunged that in there and there you have it. About 12 inches into this pile exposed to my, uh, the inside of this space is a wall of 100 plus degrees Fahrenheit that is radiating out. And so the question now is uh, twofold. And this is where I'd love some input from you folks. If you recall, last year what I did was I had a little bit more of a complex heating system out there, which seems like it's actually unnecessary. And I had this PEC circuit, which is run in a loop attached to a tank of water right here. Now I could do that again. I've learned my lesson that it will not passively thermosiphon um, with just that amount of loop. So I'm fine using a little pump and moving water through it. But what are some other ideas? Part of me is thinking, well, what if it runs a PEC circuit through the floor? Rather than a water tank, we can have loops of PEX uh, with a little reservoir of water and a circulator pump, so all of the soil down here gets charged with that warmth. Do I try to run it through the bed itself? That would disturb a lot of the plants in here, but maybe I'm open to that if there's a compelling argument. And then how do we take that wall of 100 some odd Fahrenheit degrees that's radiant uh, just sitting there and actively draw it off into the space. I tried making a hood from that to these tubes which run down through this garden bed, uh, but I didn't really do a great job with that. Maybe there's some suggestions or some aha ideas that can help trigger some better design for me. So consider this a collaboration between all you wonderful folks and my weird experiments. Sweet Stanley. He's having a nice day out here. A little break in the cold. Let's get our friend the cat out here. So um, I'm going to leave it here for now. There is the rough sketch of this fall's experiments with a pending, uh, very, very active high heat compost system to the outside of this greenhouse space. In the past, people have suggested, why not put that compost on the inside? Uh, so I'll, I'll encourage you to not suggest that again. I don't think I'm going to do that. Physically, it would take up way too much space, and I'm not that keen on having a huge amount of off-gassing directly in the greenhouse because that pairs to the home. Where it is right now, there's radiant heat, but not there's pretty much no odor at all that I'm getting from that, just warmth when I put my hand there. Um, but I'm not committed to or stuck on this having to be insanely hot and working all fall and winter, but as a proof of concept to get it to a functional space so that come late winter, early spring, when we need this space to start plants for transplanting and for nursery work and to get some greens going, I can replace this with a more scaled up, more insulated and more refined version of itself. The basic idea of the leaf bags as both the container and the fuel for a composting system feels pretty compelling to me. 140 degrees Fahrenheit blasting in the interior of that for the cost of zero dollars for us and then we get compost. I've got no complaints. Uh, but how do we draw that heat off with the PEC circuit? How do we draw the, the warm air off of that? I am all ears. Thanks for being part of this community and hopefully you are warming weird janky spaces appended to your home where you are or at least watching weirdos like me do it. Take care. Hi, bubs. <laughs>